So I was watching the report this morning, and um, from this guy, I'm gonna play a little bit of it. He, you know, it's a shame what has happened to black people in America, right? We, black people in America had a once, um, the trajectory, right, out of slavery and Jim Crow, the trajectory was up and out and onward to greatness. And now in 2024, it has become abysmal and dark and wicked and ugly, right? Like what has happened? And as they stand on the precipice of total destruction in the United States, right? The remnant of the descendants of slaves, right? I ain't talking about black immigrants. They'll be fine because they can just pick up and go back where they came from. And so, I'm talking about the descendants of slaves that ain't got nowhere to go, right? And so, because the Negro has to wait on the Lord, that's the prophecy, right? You have to wait on the Lord of hosts, you see? There is no go back to Africa now. And the sadder part about that is, they have basically tainted themselves in America to the degree that the Negro ain't going to survive America. They too destroyed spiritually, mentally, right? That they're going to either die in America and lose their soul in America, right? Or you're going to be physically destroyed in America, right? Soon, 2024, 2025, right? You're going to be utterly obliterated in America. you already obliterated, right, pretty much, right? And you, you know, the, the Negro had a once proud, wonderful trajectory, you know what I mean, of a people who had created so much coming out of slavery and Jim Crow, right? And to, you know, I mean, you look at the inventions, the the stoplight, the gas mask, peanut butter, open heart surgery, jazz, hip hop, rock, the blues, you know, all kinds of poetry and art and inventions, right? And, and you know, Jet Magazine coming up, you know, all kinds of journalistic pursuits and different things, right? I'm not going to go on. And then to end up in total destruction in America. In 2024, 2025 is a is is very sad, but necessary, right? You know, it's very sad, but necessary. You know, and the Bible talks about two witnesses, right? And so, I feel like you know, some of us we have to we have to witness this. We have to bear witness to this destruction, right? But anyway, so this man he does a report. Let me let me play some of this, man, and and it really outlines the de the degeneration and degradation of the so-called black American descendant of slaves, right? I'm gonna play some of this. You giving them the money, Joe? Why don't you do something about it? The wonderful academic activist and television host, Mark Lamont Hill, gave a fantastic speech at a church, and I have to share a clip of this. But first, I got to give you some context. So in case you're not too familiar with Mark Lamont Hill, you uh, should be. The, th this, ironically, or coincidentally, came up yesterday in uh, the video I did on Netanyahu's recent speech and his uh, insane comments, but... This story here, it's, I just realized it's really weird seeing a large version of myself and then a small version of myself. But uh, this story, so this is from 2018, when CNN fired Mark Lamont Hill for speaking up for Palestinians. And he used the phrase, from the river to the sea, which Netanyahu used yesterday to literally mean eliminating Gaza and all of its people and taking over the land. Meanwhile, Mark Lamont Hill used it in terms of equal rights for all. Israelis, Palestinians, in a one state. But that is the uh, genesis of what we're going to talk about here. Because last week, Joe Biden 
was speaking at uh, the Mother Emanuel Church in uh, South Carolina and was protested. So I'm going to get to some reaction to that at the time, but first I want to show you a bit of that protest when it happened. Without the truth, there's no light. Without light, there's no path from this darkness. That's all right. 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 What an incredible moment for a variety of reasons. So before I get to Mark Lamont Hill's speech that references that moment, just looking at what happened there, the protesters standing up and fighting for the rights of Palestinians while Joe Biden is speaking about the importance of truth and getting out from the darkness. You'd think if a leader cared about the importance of truth and getting out of the darkness, you would care about what's happening to Palestinians right now in Gaza. And not even just Gaza, to be fair, also the West Bank. What's been happening in Gaza and the West Bank for decades. You'd think this president would care. But instead, his administration is supplying the far right-wing Israeli government with endless amounts of arms. Now, the reaction from the crowd is incredibly embarrassing. Chanting four more years as they're being escorted out. I mean, you can't find a more embarrassing moment than that. It I had to stop that. He's right. Right? Black people, you, you're making yourself look like an embarrassment in front of the world. These this black people was the people that gave you Malcolm X. Martin Luther King, right? All these people that came out the civil rights movement out of these churches and these places where you now allow genocide, Jim Crow Joe, to come in and a man who told you when you asked reparations told you to fuck off, right? He's been doing every negative thing he can against black people since he cried in the world. He supported apartheid, the KKK, everything else. Then you bring him into, you know, these bastions of civil rights and supposedly houses of God, right? And then you embarrass, even the white man said, this is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. Even white people, white people look at you like a mockery now, right? You old Negroes. You all, you, you buck dancing coons, right? The white man looked at you as a mockery. He said, this is embarrassing. You were an embarrassment in front of the whole world, right, at this point. That's why immigrants come to the United States. They don't have no respect for you in America. You're an embarrassment in front of the whole world. No backbone. You lost your spirit. In America, you lost your soul in America. You lost your backbone, your will to fight, your will to. You you can't even speak out and tell Joe Biden, somebody like horrible person like Joe Biden. Listen, you can't come into our church. We would not allow you to defile the house of God, our God, because we all. Joe Biden don't have the same God as black people. The 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 slave and the slave master don't have the same God. You fools. So you should be you shouldn't allow Joe Biden to come in to your house of worship and spit in the face of your so called God and mock you, your grandparents, everything you your your parents, everything y'all been through in this country, right? And make you an embarrassment in front of even white this white man right here said this is an embarrassment. It is. It's it's a total embarrassment. I'm ashamed of black people, man. Black people are going to be destroyed in America. Black people are destroyed and going to be finished off in America. You will never make it out of America. Why? God will not allow it. Because you have defiled everything that is holy. Right? To make a deal with the devil. And for the selling, your, you signed a contract with Satan. And for that, you're going to have to pay for this. You're going to pay for this. Right? You become a mockery 
and an embarrassment, even to white people. Even this white man is like, this is embarrassing. Let me go on. Give completely into power, not criticize anything, not, you know, I understand wanting to allow Biden to continue his speech and not just shutting down the whole speech because of protesters, but to not at least sit for a minute, think about what they're talking about, think about what they're fighting for, empathize, understand the actual situation, understand who you're standing in front of. It's this, this desire to always give into power and Make the person, you know, in this case at the podium here, feel comfortable as opposed to challenging him because he, he holds, Biden holds a lot of power over the situation in, uh, in Gaza. It's not as if this is just out of his hands. No, he's, he's actively enabling and, and, and helping Israel commit the crimes they are committing. Now, I want to just quickly, because I want to get to Mark Lamont Hill's speech, of course, but just quickly show you this headline here, and I'll get to more from this piece after the video. But this uh, was posted on MSNBC, uh, surprisingly. It's protesters, not politicians, who keep the history of Mother Emanuel Amy alive. Writing here, and to be clear, this is to give credit to uh, Ken J. Mackin, writer and host of Making a Difference podcast, saying, what's more appropriate in the sanctuary of Emanuel AME, the head of the government making a campaign speech, or people yelling out for the freedom of people who were oppressed? So again, I'll get to more of that context in a bit, but I want to get to Mark Lamont Hill's speech. So just, uh, he writes here last Sunday, St. S- Sabina Church welcomed me to deliver the annual Martin Luther King Day message. As always, it was a blessing to be in such a beautiful space of radical love and beloved community. I did my best to link my words to the legacy of MLK by challenging empire, calling for justice and demanding action from all of us. Check this out. Welcome to OCC Learning. And e- oh. That they opened the pulpit up to genocide Joe. Y'all can get mad, I don't care. And people, as he began to give his campaign speech, Some protesters stood up and said, stop the blood in Palestine. Yeah. Yeah. They said, if you are outraged by the blood of Selma and you're outraged by the blood that was spilled in this very church, then how about calling for a ceasefire in Palestine since you're giving them the weapons, you're giving them the support, you're giving them the money. Joe, why don't you do something about it? They marched and stood up and got kicked out of the church and people said, we're outraged. You know, I was outraged too. Yes, sir. How dare you use this sacred space? Yeah. How dare you use this beloved pulpit? How dare you use this sacred tradition? How dare you use the words of Jesus who overturned the tables in the temple, who was committed to de- overturning a Roman government, who was committed to speaking out against injustice? How dare you use this space as a shield for imperial war? How dare you use this space as a shield for violence? How dare you use this space as a shield for genocide? Go ahead, Go ahead. The moral atrocity that took place wasn't some disruptive protesters. It was the fact that you allowed the leader of the most violent and bloody empire in modern history to stand in this place and represent a tradition that he ain't got nothing to do with. How dare you? Mark Lamar Hill is right. How dare you, black people? That's what God going to say to y'all soon. How dare you commit a more atrocity like this? The nigger, the Negro in America committed a more atrocity on their own people. Right? With all this uh, feminism, independent women, integration, diversity, right? supporting genocide Joe. Black people in America voted for Joe Biden three times and now they're about to do it four times. A man who supported segregation in the KKK and never gave them shit, right, to make up for it. Never gave him shit, told him kiss his ass and vote for them, vote for him. That's all he ever did. And Negro stood in line and did it. And like Mark Lamar Hill said, committed a moral atrocity against their own people. 
against the the against you you commit a moral tr atrocity against Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, everybody who died. These men was poor. They wasn't rich like Puff Daddy or Barack Obama. They ain't had no goddamn money. But they put they sacrificed their family and and, they, and riches and all of that shit to do what was right. And then you committed a moral atrocity against your own grandparents and your parents and, and the people and the generation that stood up and tried to help you when these people was stringing your ass up on corners and lighting you on fire. And the best thing you can do is bring people like Joe Biden, keep bringing Joe Biden into the church and supporting a bunch of, a bunch of salt teens who don't give a fuck about you at all. They would gossip and strip your ass the first chance they get in America. For real. They don't give a fuck about you no more than they care about them people. And you wonder why. Go listen to the tape from the white principal at Pikesville High School. These are your friends. And you help them commit moral atrocities. Right, and you wonder why you ain't got no luck no more in America. Why you at the bottom, and they bringing millions of immigrants in here to put them on top of your ass and ethnically cleanse your ass next, and guys will strip your asses. You an embarrassment to God. God looks at you as a moral atrocity. See, people have too much freedom. Freedom is overrated. Freedom is a satanic principle. At a certain level. I'm, right? Let me say this real quick and get back to this. Freedom is a satanic principle. They tell you in America, we're going to give you freedom. Look what happened to the Negro in freedom. They got so-called freedom, right, to do what? So so your daughter can, can, can stick her vagina and her breasts and her anus onto Instagram and, and auction it off to the highest bidder? And, and tell you about how she an independent woman. Right? And be a single mother with a bunch of kids and no no husband, no no discipline in the home. Freedom to do what? To join in with a bunch of uh, 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 racists. The freedom to, to go around. Freedom... You know, these people, they tell you about freedom, like Joe Biden, he talking, he's standing there in the church, right, telling you about freedom and democracy. Where's the freedom for the people in Yemen, where y'all killed 400,000 people and starved them to death for nine years, right? And then when they say stop the genocide in Gaza, you proceed to bomb them again. Where is their freedom at? Where's the, where's the freedom for the people in Palestine? Where's the freedom for the people in Africa that don't want you in their fucking country? See, freedom is overrated. The freedom to do what? The freedom for some, some no good bitch to stand up and tell your children, you don't got to listen to your father. I'll call the police on him. I got the court system. I'll get the court system against your father. I'll get the child support system. I got freedom. I'm a free woman. I got freedom. Feminist, uh, feminine freedom. Feminism. I got integration, democracy, and freedom. And then your kids end up in prison or end up a fucking cuck somewhere, right? A brainless cuck. And you say, man, what happened, man? I got all this freedom. This shit ain't working out for me. The freedom to bring Joe Biden into a church, a so-called house of God, where people like Joe Biden string up and kill your family members and burn them goddamn churches to the ground 50, 60, 70 years ago, 100 years ago. They never did shit to make amends for it, but now you bring him in and kiss his ass and commit, like he said, a moral atrocity. You wonder why your children won't listen to you. And nobody want to listen to you, don't want to deal with a lot of you Negroes. You wonder why everything happening the way it's happening. You an embarrassment 
Like this white man said, y'all, y'all embarrassing. You embarrassing. You think the fucking those you think those satanic Jewish people would let them do that? Would let them bring like some Nazis into their synagogues and give speeches? Only the Negro would do something like that. You think these people had too much self respect? Even though they the devil the Bible speaks of, they got a, a, too much self respect, right? And and power to let them bring a Nazi into one of their synagogues to give a speech to them about freedom and democracy while putting his foot up their ass. I mean, let, let's go on. Where your rage should be directed to. Because there was a lot of anger, a lot of discussion around these protesters protesting Biden at the church. Should, should they do that? Is that the right thing to do? Are they going to get people on their side by doing that? How about looking at why is Biden even there? What has he been doing recently? Exactly. And how do those words that he was speaking there about, you know, the importance of truth and fighting for humanity, how does that contrast with what he is doing with his actual power? Because words are one thing. It's great to give a nice speech. It's another if that speech is completely empty and you are currently funding a genocidal right-wing government in Israel. Just... The fact that CNN let this guy go, the fact that MSNBC let Mehdi Hassan go, canceled his show, it, it, it shows you these established powers do not want to hear the truth. They don't care about actual truth. Some context for the church that Biden spoke at. So as the history on its website proudly proclaims, the AME denomination is the result of a protest from black Methodists who weren't being treated equally by white congregants. Denmark Vesey, a freed man, joined the AME church in 1817 and planned a slave rebellion in 1822 at Mother Emanuel. Vesey was executed by hanging, and the church where he plotted the attack was burned to the ground. Instead of being remembered for its history of radical protest, the church has been a refuge for politicians to score points. Biden was at Emmanuel in the first in the first place in an attempt to appeal to black voters, who, according to poll numbers, are growing cool to his candidacy. One should never be upset about people protesting for what's right at Mother Emmanuel. The church's existence, especially after its original building was reduced to ashes by the ruling powers, is a testament to the necessity of protest. So I wanted to come back to that clip from that article this man talked about. See, this is what I mean by black people are an embarrassment. White people are smarter than you, right? That's how you wind up a slave. And you are now you're at the bottom of the market because they're smarter than you. This white man sitting there, and he's like, yo, this is embarrassing. He's pointing out the embarrassing shit for black people. But none of the black people, are point, other than like maybe Mark Lamar Hill, are really pointing out how embarrassing this whole Joe Biden thing is. It has been. This whole Obama, Joe Biden, Joe Biden. This shit is an embarrassment. It's in a, a moral what you what you black what you Negroes did with Obama and Biden was a moral atrocity. And here's why. If you read that article where he talks about how Denmark Vesey, right, was was planning a slave rebellion. And, and you coons, see, the remnant of an, what's in America ain't nothing but a bunch of coons. Let's be honest. A lot of you Negroes is just a bunch of coons. You the ones that sold out Denmark Vesey in them churches. That's why you in them churches not saying nothing, clapping for Obama and Joe Biden. And you're going you gonna to burn up in America soon. You ain't nothing but missile food. You nuclear missile food. That's all you are. Walking pieces of charcoal. And you're not going to make it. Why? Because the Lord don't want you contaminating no other generations. I don't give a fuck who you are. Whether you're in my family, black community, I don't give a damn about any of that. The most important thing is that you don't make it to contaminate another generation. Right? Because you the people that put Denmark... That, that ratted out Denmark Vesey and sold out Denmark Vesey in them churches, right? They said Denmark Vesey was planning a slave rebellion in 1817, right? 
in the white church in America was totally racist, so black people had to start their own church in America. Nikki Haley said, and all these white people said, America not a racist country. Oh, really? By, by what metric? What, what, what universe do y'all live in? These people live in an alternate universe that don't exist. The universe of Satan, the devil, the liar, and the murderer, and the land thief, and the genocidal maniac, genocide Joe. They live in that universe. But there is a real universe in the real world that you motherfuckers are about to get introduced to. Some of y'all are going to get introduced to it through nuclear fire. Right? It says no racism in America. It was America and our racist country. Black people couldn't even go, had to start their own churches. You see? And so, they put this man to death, right? Because he wanted to be free. They hang him, they executed him and lynched him, right? And then they burned the churches to the ground, right? The same churches that you embarrassing Negroes now bring Joe Biden, who supported Jim Crow Joe, who supported Jim Crow, and is a racist. That's why he support genocide and them Arabs over there. Because this motherfucker is a straight up Nazi and a racist, but y'all bring him into the same church that your ass said that they burnt, that his people burnt down. Right? And clap for him and, and show him, tell him how much you love him and how much you want him to rule over him. The only person a Negro should want ruling over them is the Lord of hosts. That's it. Not Joe Biden. But instead of exemplifying that and telling him he's not welcoming your churches, you brought him into the house of the Lord, right? Into the house, so-called house of God. And then you clap for him and you told people that's, that, that's against him, they got to get the fuck out so that you can honor Joe Biden and all his people and the Democratic Party and the rest of these people. Does that make sense? These people spit in the face of God and you wonder why black people, the Negro going to be destroyed in America. Now, I, I'm going to say this as a prediction. Not one of you niggas, not one of these Negroes out here, not one of them, right, that's supporting this bullshit going to make it out of America in the next couple of years. you just not. You ain't got the sense that God gave a fucking rock. You ain't got like you ain't got the sense and the courage, the intellectual courage to stand up and say, "Listen, I ain't with this shit no more. This shit ain't good for my children. It ain't been good for me." You ain't got the fucking sense that God gave a rock to say, "I'm not with none of this. This shit is a is a is a path to hell and damnation for a whole people." This ain't freedom. This is free doom. It's a lead, It's leading you to doom. You and your fucking children in America. There is no future for America. You never gonna make America great again. It was never great. As you can see from the story where they was burning down the churches. What kind of wicked satanic people won't let you in the church, and if you build one, they burn it to the ground and lynch the people in the churches. And I got to tell you that these are the spawn of Satan. These are the synagogue of Satan. These are the leaders of the Antichrist church on earth. I got to tell you that. You that fucking dumb. If you that fucking dumb, you don't need to make it past 2024 or 2025. All you going to do is make other people dumb. You're going to maybe get pregnant and have some dumbass children. We got enough dumb, sellout coons around here. We don't need any more. We don't need no more bed winches. Right? You don't need any more of this bullshit. It led, it, all it did was lead blacks in America up to the gates of hell. 
And now you go ready, Joe Biden and the rest of them are going to push your ass right through them gates. And know what I say? Good. Let's finish this off. You know, I think this other part of the article was very telling. It said black people, black church leaders and black people in the community, they bring politicians, white people like Joe Biden, a racist, segregationist, KKK member like Joe Biden, into churches, Obama and the rest of them, to score points with black people. Is that what the church is for? Y'all claim y'all, I'm a man of God. I'm a woman of God. This is the house of God. So you telling me in America, you Negroes built the house of God to promote a false freedom in a bunch of races who ain't doing shit for you. And that's uh, denigrating your whole goddamn memory, your community, your culture. The propagandizing a lot of your people. That's what they turned the black church into. Damn the black church in America. The black church in America is nuclear, is, is tender for the nuclear missiles. The black church in America is nuclear missile food. Right? Obviously. I mean, not because I say so, but they damned their self. Right? It used to be radical protests and support for black people's freedom in America and, and for their true freedom, right? To be self-actualized and not be oppressed. And then they turned it into an instrument of Nazis, right? To propagandize and coerce weak, stupid Negroes and they're making Negro Nazis like Obama. You see? Black people have committed a moral atrocity, like you said. You gotta pay for that. This the age of karma, you see. Of what Israel has been committing against Palestinians than what has been going on these past few months. He is clearly on the wrong side. And by the way, we shouldn't need time to see this. I'm just I'm referencing time in the sense of what the established thinking will clearly uh, come to realize, I guess, in the years to come, and and just how much of a disaster this current administration is, especially when in regards to their foreign policy with with uh, Israel and Gaza. But this is just. This is another example of how disconnected Joe Biden is from people and really how far right wing he is. Look, this is not, I feel like I have to keep doing this because I read the comments, not all of them, but. So I'm gonna end with, with, the, with another clip of Mark Lamar Hill, the extended clip, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, black people finished in America. You allow America to destroy y'all and turn y'all into a bunch of degenerates. You know what I mean? And so your fate is your fate. You know what I mean? I don't have no pity. I don't have no more pity, no more sympathy, nothing. I got nothing for you. You know what I'm saying? I got the same thing that the Lord of Hosts got for you. You know what I'm saying? I got no more sympathy for black people in America, man. Not after this whole Obama, Joe Biden thing, right? Not after watching these people, you know, claim to be Christians and watching them defile the house of their so-called God, right? And spit in the face of God. And, and in the words of Mark Lamont, he'll commit a moral atrocity. So let's, let's go out on this. Calmly, when I watch these preachers, ooh, Lord, God. And these bourgeois Negroes who will allow the church to be used as a shield for empire. Yeah. Yes, sir. Last week, there was a protest in the great mother Emmanuel AME Church in South Carolina, a beautiful church. 
a historic church, a church birthed out of struggle, birthed out of the struggle of the African Methodist Episcopal tradition, which is built on saying black folk have a right to preach to the word of God and not just the other black folk. Black folk have a right to full humanity and full participation. Don't tell me you love God and you obey the commandments of God and the word of Jesus and tell me that black folk ain't got the same rights. So the AME church is a church of struggle. And it's also a church of tragedy. We know that Dylan Roof went into that church and killed nine beloved saints as they were praying. So I was a bit struck last week when I saw that they opened the pulpit up to Genocide Joe. Y'all can get mad, I don't care. And people, as he began to give his campaign speech, some protesters stood up and said, stop the blood in Palestine. They said, if you're outraged by the blood of Selma and you're outraged by the blood that was spilled in this very church, then how about calling for a ceasefire in Palestine since you're giving them the weapons, you're giving them the support, you're giving them the money. Joe, why don't you do something about it? They marched and stood up and got kicked out of the church and people said, we're outraged. <laughs> you know, I was outraged too. How dare you use this sacred space? How dare you use this beloved pulpit? How dare you use this sacred tradition? How dare you use the words of Jesus who overturned the tables in the temple, who was committed to overturning a Roman government, who was committed to speaking out against injustice? How dare you use this space as a shield for imperial war? How dare you use this space as a shield for violence? How dare you use this space as a shield for genocide? Go ahead, Go ahead. The moral atrocity that took place wasn't some disruptive protesters. It was the fact that you allowed the leader of the most violent and bloody empire in modern history to stand in this place and represent a tradition that he ain't got nothing to do with. See, it took Mark Lamont Hill, he had to go in the fire. What happened to Mark Lamont Hill? See, Mark Lamont Hill wasn't that fiery. But he, you know what happened to Mark, um, Mark, Mark Lamont Hill? To make him say everything he just said? He used to work for CNN. He was pretty moist, right? He was a lot more moist on there, right? But what happened was, CNN, all his friends at CNN, the so-called Jews had him fired for speaking out a couple of years ago. When they killed a bunch of people in, in Palestine. And so he talked about on CNN, the Jews called CNN to their Jew friends over there, and they fired Mark Lamont Hill. And all of his friends turned their back on him. All his good white Jewish friends and his white friends, right? So Mark Lamont Hill, he got a dose of reality and he saw the light. You see, I don't know if he's seen the light totally yet. But he started to see the light. So then he comes and gives his speech. Very fiery, very accurate. Everything he said, where's the lie? There's no lies in anything he said, right? But his experience is going to be the experience for every Negro in America. Something bad has got to happen to you, right? America itself is already something bad has happened to you. But obviously, it, you know, we got the Lord has to turn up the heat on you. It's going to be more than you, your white friends on your job getting you fired. Something worse got to happen to y'all in America. And not just that, but collectively. You see? Because that ain't enough for some Negroes. It's, it's just not enough. You see? And a lot of these Negroes cannot be allowed to go any further. You have to be stopped here because a lot of y'all is just like a cancer on the community and on, on, on the world. You see? And so you all you're going to do is commit a moral atrocity if you're allowed to go forward. If you're not stopped here, 
if they not stopped here, they're going to commit a moral atrocity and destroy and destroy what's left, you see, of a once great people. That they're going to finish the job of the Nazi and the white supremacist, the Nazi white supremacists. They're going to finish the job for them if they not stopped. The Bible said if these days were shortened, then no flesh could be saved. Let's end on that. Right? Since we're in the church, let's take them all the way to the church. Matthew 24 and 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those, those, those days shall be shortened. What does that mean? See, the Negro in America, only a few of them gonna be, are going to be seen by the Lord of hosts as elect. The Negroes in there clapping for Joe Biden, you're not elect. That's, I mean, that's very simple. You're clapping for Obama and Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton and, you you know, joining hands with a bunch of Nazis, right? Being, you know, coons and bear wenches. You're not, obviously, you're not elected for anything. You're not chosen by God for anything but nuclear fire, you see? And, and, and like, like I said, the Lord has to draw a line in the sand for y'all. Right? It ain't no crossing that line. Right? The day, the time of repentance is over with. The door is closed on y'all. Trust me. You're going to find that out very shortly. Right? You're going to look around you and you're going to realize, people are going to realize the door is closed. All that's left is punishment and judgment and, and salvation for the, for the elect, as it says in Matthew. I believe Matthew was a direct quote from, from the, uh, the prophet, right? And fellow son of God, Jesus Christ, right? So-called Jesus Christ. That's a title and not a name, right? The days have to be shortened. Your days, the days of this has to be shortened. You see? Why? Because if not, these people would contaminate and destroy everything that, that, you know, in front of them that comes next. So it's not my, so don't get mad at me, you know, don't don't get mad with me for just pointing out the obvious, right, and pointing out what's written in your law. Is this not, like, like Christ said, is it not written in your law that it said that ye are gods? Is it not written in your laws in Matthew 24 and 22 that the day, not that I said it, but that the days shall be shortened, for no flesh should be saved. If that is that not written in your law? You see, all these fake Christians. But they talking about you. That's why you don't like it. A lot of people, your family and the people out here in America, they're talking about the America. And the descendants of slaves, particularly in America. Why? Because these are the, the children of Israel. And what did he say? Judgment begins at the house of the Lord of hosts, meaning his descendants. Right? You're going to be judged first and more viciously than everyone else. You see? For your treason and your transgression. I understand that because I, like no, I don't like no disloyal people. Particularly like ones in my family. And people around so I understand that spirit you see the spirit of judgment on a disloyal treasonous person you see and so he said is it not written in your law you see so you had to go to the law and what does the law say well if the word of the so called Christ ain't the law then Negro you tell me what is you see That the days got to be shortened. That therefore other people could be saved. These people's days have to be shortened. The treasonous, clapping, Negro, and defiling the house of God. Days have to be shortened. Therefore the elect could be saved. Why? Because they will allow and, and help to destroy the elect. Like Denmark Vesey. Like Martin Luther King, 
Jesse Jackson, etc., etc. Malcolm X, right? The people that are elect. These people will serve them up to the devil, the Antichrist, and Satan, just like those people. <laughs> Joe Biden, Obama, Joe Biden, just like those people. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right? These people who serving people up to the goddamn devil himself. To the Antichrist, Satan. In the house of so-called God, that is a moral atrocity that cannot be forgiven. You see, the time of repentance is over with. There is no repentance for that. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Sorry about what? Destroying generations of people? There's no forgiveness for that. You see? Other people have to watch you be punished so that they know not to do it again. You see? They have to watch America be punished. They have to watch the whole... It's 30 million Negroes in America. One th only only 10 million of them going to make it out. One third, third going to make it out. That means only 10 million Negroes going to make it out of America. That's the prophecy. I didn't write it. I just read it. Where it says two thirds of my people shall die and be cut off. You see? And Matthew says it again. Those days shall be shortened and these people shall die and be cut off. Right, for more committing more atrocity against the house of God and the word and the laws and the prophecy and the commandment. I ain't gonna belabor the point. I think you, you either you get it or you don't. You know, but the time is short. Not because I said so, but because Matthew says so. And a lot of times you hear people say that, and you know. You think, well, that's total bullshit, right? I'm going to live in Satan's living room forever and party my life away. Okay, we'll see. That's all I got.